Michelle Wong, before I start, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Kodash, double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akimo Akwath, learning and teaching of truth and sincerity. All right, this is something that, uh, you know, the Spirit hopped on me to do. We're going to take a look at who that stranger is that sojourns a monkey. All right, so we're going to deal with two words out of the Hebrew, gar and the car, which if you've been around for a minute, you've heard the breakdown to. And we're going to understand, we're going to come to under the understanding that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't deal with these heathen on the same level as he does his chosen people, which are the Israelites, nor does he love them uh, in the fashion that the Israelites are loved. All right. Even the wicked of our people, they will be raised back up to their righteous mindset and bodies in the kingdom. But the heathen will never be on the same level physically nor spiritually as the Israelites. And it is what it is. The Heavenly Father, this is his show. This is his story. We're just living in it. So let's start with Exodus 12. And we're going to read this. This is uh, the chapter when Moses was laying down. You know, Moses was telling everybody to get ready for the Passover event. The fact that, you know, they had to be in their homes when the Spirit went out to do the slaughter, right? The, the lamb, you know, 14th day uh, at even uh, on the first day of the month, all right? From the, then you go from the 15th to the 21st, right, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, so, you know, this whole chapter, the whole, you know, we're about to get delivered up out of Egypt, uh, you know, all, all, all that good stuff. But right here towards the end, you see this, Exodus 12 and 49, it says, One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. So what is that dealing with? The fact that there's a stranger amongst the Israelites, all right? It says a homeborn and stranger. Now, does, does this mean that the heathen, the non-Israelites that are amongst the children of Israel, uh, are they somehow magically allowed to partake in all of the same customs and benefits as the Israelites? No. All right. Now, by proxy, uh, slaves have to uh, ordain themselves you know, as we see fit, all right? So they're not gonna be up around us willy-nilly, but they're not Israelites, uh, nor are they given the benefits and the customs. They sure as hell ain't allowed in the temple, all right? They sure as hell ain't, uh, you know, marrying none of our women, or supposed to be, all right? So let's deal with this word stranger right here. Who is that sort, who is that stranger that will be sojourning among you who must keep the Passover like how an Israelite in the land of Israel must keep the Passover. Okay, because that's what that's dealing with. And not only that law, but all the laws. Uh, Exodus 12 and 49. We'll go look at that word there for stranger. And what do we get? Gar. Perfect. H 1616. A sojourner, a temporary inhabitant a newcomer lacking inherited rights of foreigners in Israel though conceded rights so what you'll come to understand you know the Holy Spirit is dealing with you this word stranger here guard this is dealing with an Israelite who more than likely was not born in the land of Israel all right and has to come up for one of the three high holy days which we're going to get right he has to come up to hold those high holy days Therefore, when they are in the land of Israel, they do not have certain ownerships and authorities as an Israelite naturally born in Israel, uh, in the land of Israel, you know, in his, uh, of his tribe, of his kinsmen, you know, this is his property, these are his sheep, this is his plot of land, he has these amount of servants, all right, the same way that you don't have ownership over things and other places that don't belong to you, you know, so, say for instance, you know, you're born in the state of Florida and your people are from fucking California. And although you're going to visit your family in California, you don't own none of them houses there. 
that you visited. All right, and when your ass leave, you got to go back to Florida to where you, to where you dwell. And I'm just using that as a modern day example. So this word gar is dealing with Israelites of conceded rights in simplest terms. That is why the law applies to them and natural born Israelites, because regardless, as an Israelite, you are under the law, no matter if you were born in the land or not. Let's get that. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go. 17. Now, this is dealing with the uh, custom of circumcision. All right. And you can apply this with the laws universally. All right. There's, there's other scriptures, but this is one of the one that comes to mind. This is Genesis 17 and 10. This was being told to Abraham. It says, this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. All right. So. And now. This was told to Abraham, and this went down the line, passed to Abraham, uh, went from Abraham, Isaac to Jacob. All right. Although all the males in Abraham's household, you know, were circumcised, we know that the law of circumcision applies to who? The Israelites. So by proxy, you, all Israelites must be under the law. All right. And those who don't, you know, hey, you, you're, hey, <laughs> you're liable for death. All right, now in the kingdom, we're going to be back perfect. Obviously, on this side, we're not able to perfectly keep the law. That's what Yahweh Shai is for. That's what grace is for. All right, now I want to get another example. Let's go to Deuteronomy because we're going to see why the Israelites who were born in foreign lands, why they had to even come to the land of Israel to keep the Passover in the first place because that, uh, you know, Exodus chapter 12 is done with the Passover. What does it say right here? Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males. Now it, it says all thy males. Does it say just born in Israel? Or just the Judites? Or just the Benjamites? Or just the Levites? No. It says all thy males. Must do what? Three times in a year uh, shall all thy males appear before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, thy power in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. All right, the first phrase, the feast of unleavened bread, is a synonym for the Passover. Okay. Uh, in the uh, feast of weeks, uh, Pentecost. Yes, slack. Uh, otherwise known as Pentecost. Uh, so these were three high holy days where all the Israelite males had to come up to the Holy Land regardless. And that's why, you know, as it said in that Exodus 12 and 41, one law shall be to them that is homeborn and another of the gar, the stranger that sojourneth among you. So now we know who that stranger is. Now what you do when you go to here, you come back here, type in a uh, now hit this word stranger right here and it pops up and tells you 87 times. So you see it in various scriptures, and you see it right there, that Exodus 12 and 49. Uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, that's a good one, Exodus 23 and 9. This tells you, and thou uh, also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Egypt. Now, does, does this mean we can't oppress the heathen and subjugate them? No, because when you read through Israelite history, obviously they put heathens into slavery. The Heavenly Father literally commanded the Israelites to kill the heathen that were in the Holy Land. All right. And the ones that didn't get killed, they were subjugated and there was no issue with that. But now that you understand that this word stranger here is gar, it means what? Israelites of conceded rights, Israelites of foreign land, foreign lands, which is why you're not supposed to oppress them. Now things begin to make sense when you read the Bible, right? When the when the Rakhak Wadash is dealing with you, because the way that the Christians set things up, you know, oh, everyone can make it, you know, strangers, anybody, no, that doesn't make sense, because the Israelites had slaves, the Israelites uh, 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 killed strangers. There's a, a, there's the scriptures that tell you. Matter of fact, when you go to Leviticus, there's scriptures that tell you we're supposed to put them in fucking subjugation. 
so is the Heavenly Father a hypocrite? No. The Christian church has done an ill-favored job of breaking down the scriptures. And that's the issue. All right, right here. Leviticus 25 and 44, showing you the difference. All right, this is going to be uh, crazy. It's a lot. Leviticus 25 and 44. Actually, it's funny because the, the couple verses up, it tells you, you know, out of verse 40, a hired servant, you know, your brethren, you're not supposed to oppress. And then it goes, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 40, and then I'm going to go down. Uh, it says, uh, verse 39, it says, uh, actually, yeah, uh, Leviticus 25 and 39, if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as an hired servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee, and shall serve unto thee, and so serve thee unto the year of jubilee, the fiftieth uh, year. It says, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his family, unto his own family, and unto the possession of his father shall he return, for they are my servants. Uh, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, they shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with big vigor, but shall fear thy God. So you see the distinction when you have one of your own people as a servant, which is a Hebrew custom. You know, like I said, a man, man fell into poverty. You say, hey, man, come work for me for seven years. You know, you be straight after. Or, you know, come work for me. You know, the year of Jubilee is coming up in two years. You're going to be with me these next two years. But you don't mistreat them and beat on them, do them crazy. You know, treat them foul, which obviously you know niggas did. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this situation. But the Heavenly Father established to us that we are supposed to treat our own people way better than the heathen. Jump down to verse 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you. Of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begot in your land, and they shall be your possession. So right there, you see the difference. The heathen that are among us, we are allowed to captivate them and to possess them and to do what we see fit with them. And so now let's take a look at that word strangers out of the 45th verse. Look at this word strangers. And it's a whole other word. So it's not Gar. It's not Israelites of conceded rights. This looks like uh, uh, looks like uh, Tha Shab. Looks like Tha Shab, which literally means stranger, sojourner. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of the definitions for it. Uh, dweller but not outlandish uh, as distinguished from a native citizen <laughs> temporary inmate a, a resident alien a foreigner all right so not an Israelite a heathen clearly as we just read the word heathen was used up here what verse is this 44 yeah Let's look for that word heathen uh heathen there we go they say goy we know it's uh, uh goyam plural all right or uh, goaya singular uh nation people usually of non-hebrew people so right there we understand that we are allowed to have the heathen as our slaves the non-israelites okay so when you see when you are reading in the scriptures you see the word stranger being used two things you have to look at the context and also the Hebrew word is it gar or is it this next word we're gonna go take a look at let's take a look this next word we're gonna look at this is ridiculousness uh, Ezekiel 
believe 44 and 9. We're going to take a look at this next word right here. Let's see if I can highlight it. Boom. Start. Thus saith the Hawabashimi Hawashai power. No stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So let's take a look at this word. Now right there it says stranger. It says bin, which just means sons, but it has the arrow going down, which is this right here. So this is the word H2H5236, -H Nakar, which is what? Foreign, alien. That which is foreign. Uh, foreigner. So this is a heathen. The heathen are not allowed to partake in temple ritual rites as an Israelite, and specifically Levites, because you got not even all Israelites are able to just come up to any part of the temple. There are certain parts of the temple where certain you know Israelites can come and hand their sacrifices off to Levites, and there are certain parts of the temple. If your ass not a, if your ass specifically ain't of the seed of Aaron, you finna have to uh, get unalived. You know, so ain't, ain't that some here it is? You got to be the seed of Aaron to get into certain parts. Yeah, you got to be the high priest to get into the Holy of Holies. But the Lord's just going to let a heathen come walk willing. Man, come on, y'all. Use your brains. People, you know, the people of this world with the, you know, the Christian love everybody. John 316. Hug them out. Hug them up. Hug them out. Doctrine. It's unrealistic and it's uh, idiotic at best. All right. So now we have this word, Nakar. Now I want to look at some instances where Nakar is used. It says H5236. So we understand that this is the word associated with the heathen, more so. All right, Gar is for Israelites of conceded rights. Nakar is for heathen, strangers, aliens, foreigners outright. So let's look real quick. Uh, let's look real quick. There's a particular scripture. Okay, that's good. There's there's one I want to get. Uh, was H five, H five two three six. Let me see something. H five two three six. There's a scripture I saw earlier that I wanted to. Because uh, another way to know what you're dealing with, you have to look at the context. Uh, let me see, let me see. There's a particular one that I want to find. Okay, here we go. I found this one. Now, this is a Psalm of David. We know that David was an Israelite. Obviously, he was a king, right, of the tribe of Judah. You go to Psalms 69 and 8. Now, this is why I said you have to also be wary and look of the context of the scripture to also know, you know, if the word stranger there is dealing with a heathen or Israelite. Psalm 69 and 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. Now, is David a non-Israelite? No. Is he an alien in the sense of he was, uh, he's a heathen born in a foreign land? Is, is, you know, is he a Philistine? Is he an Amalekite? No. We clearly know that he is an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. All right. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, direct lineage uh, of the chosen line, which would go on to progenerate Yahweh uh, Shai, Mashiach, our Lord and Savior. So come look at that word, uh, stranger. Well, you got two here. You got a uh, stranger and you got that word alien there. And look, when the, you see that word alien, and it's a variation of the word that we saw earlier, this one's H5237. The other one was H2, H5236. So right here now, is David a alien? Is he a non-Israelite? No. All right, is he uh look at this word, stranger. H2114, strange, stranger. Looks like Zawar. Is, was he a stranger? Is he a non-Israelite? No, but he's expressing the sentiment that, you know, he's been made distance, uh, distant for Yahweh B'Hashem Yahweh Shai's uh, sake. And literally, you know, when you know the story of David, Hey, the Heavenly Father handpicked him and, and, you know, pulled him from the presence of his family. All right. Similar in similar fashion. 
uh, of Samuel, right? David was anointed and raised up to be the king when he was the least thought of out of his lineage, you know? So right here, you know, just say, hey, that was really about it. I just wanted to deal with these words, guard in the car, knowing when to properly, you know, when the word stranger is present, when is it referring to an Israelite? And when is it referring to a non-heathen? All right, not only do you have to look at the definitions of the word, but you also have to look at the context around the sentence. Because like right here, we see the word Nakar, which is normally associated with non-Israelites. But we see it, David used the word himself. So is he a non-Israelite? No. So that's about it. We give all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakaq Kodash, to the elders and apostles of Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations. All like to Akimu Akwath, learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. Shalom.